Buju, good morning. Welcome, everybody. We'll get started with the meeting. We'll call the meeting to order, please. Roll call. Chair? Here. 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 As always, we start our morning, our meetings off with invocation. We have our spiritual advisor, Jean Goodsky, here today.
Miigwech. Thank you, Jean. Next on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Do we have any additions or deletions? One addition under Leanne. Okay. <clears throat> it's a contract for um, an artist from Mural Painter for Scott Hill. Okay. Are we going to put that up? Uh, under Leanne. Under Leanne. Second item under Leanne. Okay. No other additions. Okay. Any other additions or? If not, I'll call for a motion to approve the agenda with those with that addition. Moved by Chief. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Shane. <clears throat> All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Silent. Motion carried. Approval of minutes from June fifth, two thousand nineteen, at Lake Vermilion. Oh, before we get going, um, I want to say that our executive director, Jenna Letty, is on vacation, and Billy um, Isham is filling in for her uh, in an acting capacity today. So, Oh, um... Uh, Jean just asked if, um, if we could, um, maybe if we can put this on back on the agenda and see if the Paul Committee can do um, fundraisers and raffles. So I, th I think, uh, I don't know if we can put it on the agenda now or if we need to um, have the Paul Committee present at the next meeting. Maybe if, could, could we do it at the next meeting or is it? Or even do a poll? Yeah, we can do a poll. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, regarding the minutes here, on page three, it says Shane Drift from um, Southern Mint Lake School is in the process of extending the hours for Harvey. Um, we need to make, I need to make a clarification on that. We had a meeting on Monday, and um, at this time, it doesn't sound like the, the school board. We're going to be moving in that direction yet, okay. as of yet. So um, I don't know what we're going to be doing with that. So okay. as of so right now, I think it's a no uncertain right now yep okay thank you for that update got a question too from page three where it says um Dan Rangan said when Ben and Ben was here he started a language committee but that isn't active anymore does anybody know exactly what they did at the language committee? Did they have like an actual language table or was it a com just a committee? Let's see. Darren, do you want to come up and explain kind of what your committee was at the uh, time? Um, Brandon Benner put it together mm -hmm. and he just asked a bunch of people to show up and we elected officers. Mm -hmm. And Chaz, I think, was president. I was vice and there was Sidra and a bunch of other people. Um, so Chaz started to make a plan to start teach la teaching language, and pretty much after that, no one showed up. So and we haven't been active doing anything lately, so. So you were having like regular meetings, monthly meetings? Yeah, we were coming down, I think it was lunch Wednesdays time? or something at lunchtime, yeah. So okay. it seemed to work out very well. And me and Chaz kept coming down, and then finally we kind of just gave up, but we didn't, uh, <laughs> well, there was people that showed up here and there, but I, we didn't really put the word out or market very well or anything, mm -hmm. you know, so, and at noon during the day, everyone's working, things like that, mm -hmm. so. So do you, do you think you guys would want to continue with, with that committee, or would you think you'd want to do a uh, focus more on, like, a language table? I'm not sure what exactly a language table. But like basically, just where we sit down and, and anybody who knows a word or, or a phrase can pass it on and then start, and start working together to teach each other on the language and then just kind of get them um, to keep doing it on a day-to-day -day basis so we keep hearing the language and it just becomes more natural, more normal. 
Yeah, that'd be cool, I think. And maybe get more elders involved. Mm -hmm. and yes. And, and, and it might so. be, you know, for your committee members that you, or people you had interested before for the, um, they mentioned the group at the school that was getting together. Um, that might be another way to re-spark it. Yeah, um, get all those different people. Get those people together. But the other thing I want to mention is that Karen did bring down um, words now that are going to be posted. Um, she, I know one was good morning. I can't remember what the other one is. Have a good day, or think, I think it was. Okay. It's posted when you come in the building, but we'll have those. Um, I think Karen saw our minutes or, or saw our meeting and, and brought those words down. So, mm -hmm. um, But we also have to remember, and, and, and I forgot already, um, and I, I'll blame my age, but I know it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, we should be saying buju, megwitch. Um, yep. We should be speaking it as much as we can yes. um, to keep that going. So um, we forget that. But I think we can start learning and, and following that way. Because I know um, Chief had mentioned, too, about, um, you know, we're always talking about getting back to our language and culture and the talking talking feather you know whenever anybody wants to speak is to pull a feather and, and talk and you're supposed to speak the truth you know um, that's a way of culture um, so you know we, we we need to get back to that because I know that um, well myself I'm um, thinking about that one um, uh, Jalen when he was talking about that they're just uh, thinking about that more and more and it's like yep. yeah we need to do more and uh, so I was interested in trying to start up a language table during lunchtime where people can just come together say a few words or a few phrases and just keep it going you know as much as i can with my schedule and if i can't be there you know somebody else will be able to take over mm -hmm. and, and help facilitate it and just keep it going keep the momentum going sidra i think that it, until we can get something like a language coordinator or a culture coordinator or whatever we have a program going that we if we can keep it as simple as possible and not overthink things and do the, the little things like the language table, um, the phrases that we have. Mm -hmm. And if everybody just tries to incorporate it into our daily lives as yeah. however we can um, and not make it a big complicated to do, um, I think that we can, That's you know, idea. to taking it by little bits and pieces, we can, we can um, start, you know, making mm -hmm. a big, bigger yep. impact. Yep. Good idea. No, Good ideas. That, kind of going off that, what you just said there, you know, is, is when, when we do that, is to put down the, the correct spelling and how it's actually spelled, but then you can each, then you can each individually write it how you pronounce it. So that's the way um, some of the others told me to do it. Just write it how you can pronounce it, because the way it's spelled is, is not how it sounds. So. That's true. Mikwitch. Yeah, wh when Brandon started doing that, that's kind of what happened is our, uh, our schedules wouldn't allow us to attend every every like it was every week mm -hmm. like it was like a Tuesday or a Wednesday at lunch <clears throat> and when we couldn't be there it kind of like slowly people started dropping slowly off not showing up oh okay like plus, plus he he brought lunch <laughs> that was really good I was just gonna say that um Tara the people that showed up there there was quite a few mm -hmm. at first there was like um, 30 or 40 people at yeah. first yeah huh? And he took it upon himself to make a lunch for yep. everybody. Um, so that was good, or else he brought your lunch with when there wasn't a lunch. But um, our schedules, yeah, like your schedules, yeah. our deadlines, um, things that, you know, the accounting schedule, the everything that the doers here that were there at that meeting, those meetings, those are the, I would say, the busiest ones yeah. here. So that's what's taking away that we can't be at those meetings mm -hmm. is because we're so busy, locked down with accounting stuff, budgets, training, day -day, training, every training. You know, yeah. field work. <clears throat> we're running ragged here. So, and then to put something else that we want to participate in, mm -hmm. We can't do it. Um, a lot of stuff we can't participate in, I would say, because we're running on that hamster wheel. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Tara. I think what we should probably do on that, too, is instead of not just language, some of our uh, traditional stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. teachings and stuff that maybe it's not language-specific 
Mm-hmm. The uh, uh, etiquette around a drum or etiquette at a powwow. Yeah. Yep. You know, there's a lot of stuff that that uh, that I was never taught, and it's. I remember start coming to powwow as it was kind of scary because I didn't want to do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. And there's, I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there like that too that just never had the teachings. You know, I think that's a good point because you know when there's two ways of of, of giving tobacco. Um, one way is where you just give the tobacco and then a person will open hand up and give it to them. They accept it. The other way is where you make the request first. Can you um, name my child? And then if the medicine man or medicine woman can, they'll say yes or hey, yeah, put their hand up. Then you give them the tobacco. Mm-hmm. See, there's two See? different ways there. Darren. Oh, I just wanted to mention that uh, KBFT is doing a, a of buy and for model with our community engagement in, uh, for like the legacy grant that mm-hmm. Chaz does. And um, I think it'd be wise to, you know, find out how the community wants to learn the language and culture, find out when, and go from there and have them organize it instead of saying, this is what we're going to give you, this is what we want to teach you. It kind of gets them involved and it makes it their own. Mm -hmm. So instead of forcing something upon the people, they are involved, they tell you what, when, why, how, and you can even get them to organize it, you know, Mm -hmm. get volunteers to fill in when... Shane's not around and different people to run the meetings. They actually run the meetings and, you know, teach themselves. Um, the council and the other, you know, teachers will just give them the tools and the knowledge. Mm-hmm. So. And that's kind of something we were talking about yesterday, just in general, just in conversation, is that um, years, many years ago, um, the community got together on, on various things. Um, Memorial Day was a was a one where um, a lot of people would come up and, and uh, clean the graves or whatever, or and they'd bring a dish, and then the community would come down to wherever the community center was at the time, and they would um, have their get-togethers and visit. It's almost like racing time when people come from out of town and and we visit. But um, Jean had mentioned that um, the only time now that the community is gathering is for Mm -hmm. funerals or when someone passes. And and we need to get back to the community, having the community get together and do those types of things. And so, you know, maybe just having a a Wednesday evening, 5 o'clock, bring your own dish, let's get together, let's play cards, let's talk culture. It's not anything political but us as a community getting back together to those old old ways and that we used to do things so but we were just talking about that yesterday so Sidra I figure this is probably a good time to mention it since there's people that are able to see you know watch the um, YouTube video as well but I a couple of weeks ago Karen gave me a call Karen Drift gave me a call and she um, I wasn't terribly happy that she reminded me that someday I'm I'm approaching elderhood, but she mentioned that <laughs> that um, there's many of us young elders in the community who um, who oftentimes when there's a funeral or when there's you know a birth or some type of ceremony or or anything that we we go to our our elder women and we ask them what we're supposed to do, and um, she reminded me that there's not many of those women elders left that we're going to be able to go to and that we need to start standing on our own feet and figuring out, Mm -hmm. you know, and and finding out what we're supposed to do in in these situations. Mm -hmm. And that, um, and that we need to somehow, um, we're gonna be the ones that are are being turned to um, in a couple of years. And so we talked for quite some time and um, I suggested that maybe we, and again, Tara mentioned, and she went back to the time thing. There's not time. But these are some important things that I think we have to start making time for. And um, instead of me holding up in my office and eating lunch by myself, maybe, you know, maybe we need to you know, sit and breathe and, and make time to sit with our elders. And, and I suggested having like a, a you know, we're going to be elders soon circle, um, where some of us women just sit and have lunch with some of our women elders, and they can tell us when it's time to give tobacco, what we're supposed to do at a funeral, you know, who makes the moccasins, and who's supposed to, you know, do what. Mm -hmm. And, you know, very informal, um, you know, doesn't have to be, you know, a big to-do, doesn't have to be, you know, anything crazy, 
Um, but we do have to start having these conversations with, with people. And so um, now I'm committed to doing that. So <laughs> I point. think that's kind of why I wanted to mention it, because you know, I'm going to help hold myself accountable now to organizing this. So. Good. Thank you, Sidra. Tara? That's funny. She says holding herself accountable. She's one of the busiest women I know. I've ever seen. I know. <laughs> um, I just want to say, going back to, I wouldn't say a time issue. Um, it, when when I get talked to about, oh, it used to be this and it used to be that, and you know, the years and whatever, and almost kind of bawled out about, you know, I'm not providing that for whatever. Um, the thing is, is we know that times have changed, yeah. and that's why I keep saying, long time ago, there was time for that. They let you off for things. There, it was a little bit more, you know, um, lenient, even with oh, grants yeah. and everything. Now it's like, go, 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 go. You know, get it done, get it done, fast. You know, we are on, you wouldn't believe how stressed everything is right now. Um, senior management, right down to the frontline people. So, um, for us to implement something, we need to, I shouldn't say soften up, but the deadlines, the pressure, the everything that, you know, accounting, I keep saying accounting, because it's like, we're peace, they used to do a, a whole, you know, they have a big staff. So now it's right down to, I gotta order stuff on Amazon, for God's sakes, for my staff. I gotta log in there, I gotta order it, I gotta do this. I don't have a secretary or anything like that. The things that this organization has us doing, running on that, like I said, that hamster wheel, in order for us to participate in things, we need to rethink the demands that you're putting on us to even have energy to put into something like this. Thank you, Tara. Teresa. <coughs> Um, good morning. I just want to add that, you know, being relatively new back home, um, one, of the, one of the women that came into my life when I first started dancing jingle was from Mille Lacs. And so when I first started speaking with her, she always said, one of the things if you want to learn, you need to go home, go back home and learn from your people. So I think it's good that you're making a push to include teaching in everyday life. And a lot of times everyday teaching doesn't necessarily need to be something that's a great big hard push, mm -hmm. but something that's subtle, something that you include a small thing every day. It doesn't have to be 50 words, you know, like Shane said, one phrase, get used to saying it, include things that we didn't include before. So it doesn't have to be a great big push, but let's, let's do that constant pressure that they talked about in the uh, strategic meeting that, you know, that we went to. So let's just make it available. And I think it's important that um, we keep, like Sidra said, the elders that we have in our community and ask them and make them um, a part of the whole process. And you know, just small things like the phrases at the door mm -hmm. um, and how to, you know, how to address things. And I think it's, it's, uh, it's a move and it's a step back where we came from, mm -hmm. that's really important for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Miigwech. Miigwech, Teresa. Miigwech. Miigwech. Any other comments? Shane, do you have any other questions on the minutes? Nope. Do we have a motion to approve the June 5th, uh, 2019 minutes at Lake Vermilion? Move. Moved by Chief. Is there a second? Second by Dave. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Silent. Motion carried. Bill? Sorry. 
Uh, introduction of new staff? Yep. Bonjour. 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 I'd like to introduce you to Roxanne Gogolai. She's um, gone through the Tarot CDL training and she is our new full-time with benefits bus driver for transit. Yay. Roxanne Gogolai. Oh, congratulations. Good. Next, we have the consent agenda. I don't believe we have any other new staff. Um, approved request from Alex Maney to a sole source the agreement with Superior Forestry Services to plant red pine seedlings in the amount of $9,750. Do we have a motion to approve that consent agenda item? Is your plan to get? No, this is. Um, this has been a while. This is th uh, Tara. For these, um, Chief has a question. Um, he said these were planted yesterday, but no, this is to plant them. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay, it says here, if you look on page, the second page, it says number three, schedule of work, contractor agrees to apply best efforts to complete the requested work described in part two, scope by June 21st, 2019. Mm -hmm. oh. There it is. Oh, okay. Were you going to say? No, no, they, he just was wondering if they were planted like yesterday, but it says they're um, to be completed by June 21st. I was just wondering because on his request here from Wicklow, it says they need to, uh, for the poll, it says um, the, the poll was dated June 10th, and it says they need to be planted today so they won't die. That's why I was confused on the dates. Oh, Jenna? Okay. That's next Friday. Oh, that's next Friday. Okay. June 21st. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move. Moved by Chief. Is there a second? Second. Second by Shane. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Silent. Motion carried. I had a quick question. Does these go out to, to anyone? The Tara, planting contract? Do you want to come up, Tara? <laughs> <laughs> There is a question. <laughs> yeah. What's that now? Uh, do these uh, contracts go out to anybody or? Uh, no, he just sent them out to area contractors. We don't, we had to hurry because right. the seedlings were gonna die. Yeah. I, and I'll just, we I'll, were very, as you guys know, we did lose two workers at forestry, so otherwise yeah. this work would have been under forestry. Oh, but they right. have so much, you know, they have the inventory to do, they yep. have yep. all this stuff to do, so we lost two workers, plus we yep. were one up short at the time. Yep. There was only yep. two guys out there, yep. so it had to go out to yep. contractor. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Good. I was just Thank wondering. You, well, I remember too back in the day that there's band members used to go out and get a contract to plant x amount of trees and they had to do it or they wouldn't get paid mm -hmm. they bid on it all that kind of i just remember being Be out nice there was to somebody have that, <laughs> to have that back but we can't even get people to apply for our jobs so yeah, yeah i understand that <laughs> thanks thank you uh, first on the agenda is Dave Anderson with a sole source request for a commercial driver's license training in the amount of 43750 Good morning, Dave. Bonjour, Dave. 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 Um, Dave. Yes. Oh, here? 
<laughs> we just have the recorder there. That's. <laughs> Yes, Hibbing Community College sole source for 43,000 plus, and um, it's for CDL training. Um, requesting it because uh, the county determined because it's beyond 3,000, I've got to get a, you know, additional quotes. But um, Hibbing's a centrally located community college in mining country and it's the closest facility to mm -hmm. Boys Fort band members. Um, for an example, from Net Lake, it's 63 miles. From Duluth, it's 70 miles. Cloquet, yep. 70. Ely, 70. Um, and also, Hibbing is, uh, because they're so, they're affiliated with the mines, they offer all of that operating engineers training and things like that. Yep. So therefore, they have that facility there. No other facility other than Hibbing has that in, the, in the area. Although Hibbing uh, is affiliated with Masabi Range, okay. yep. uh, Rainy River, yep. uh, Northwest Tech out of Bemidji, okay. and I've got a few students there right now. Good. So Hibbing, uh, their faculty and staff go to out to these <coughs> facilities mm -hmm. and uh, offer that training there, the CDL training. So that's why I have a few yep. people in, in Bemidji going right now. Is this out of that deed grant? Yes. No, okay. it's not a deed, deed grant. grant. It's, it's the um, it's the one one sixty three grant. Yeah. Okay. The uh, Mindoc uh, okay. Voice Board Agreement one sixty three, and yeah, and yes, uh, that would be one of the last portions of that grant because okay. it ends on uh, June thirtieth. Yep. This so. is one of the grants that we received from the state. It's a initial grant and uh, if done appropriately and, and if it works out great, um, then it will be offered, I think, to other tribes. We're kind of like the pilot project on this through MnDOT. Um, but this CDL class, uh, I know there are a lot of people taking it. I see you have 14 on here. Um, and that's great because um, <clears throat> all over there's workforce shortages. And there's the um, construction area in our area that's huge. Um, there's a lot of um, construction going on in the Duluth area. You said you have now some classes going on in Bemidji, but we're trying to get our, our tribal members trained in, in areas that they can um, go and work off the reservation because we're limited with positions here with government only basically in, um, in Fortune Bay or they could start their own business, but this, this enables them the opportunity to work off the reservation and maybe join a union and get good benefits and good pay and whatever. But I think uh, the MnDOT um, pilot project, I think worked out very well for, for all those involved. So I mm -hmm. wanna thank you for doing a good job on that, Dave. Thanks. Is this, um, is this a new class or is this an old class? Well, we've had like four, four groups of people go th through right now. Okay, because um, I'm looking at- Initially, when I got on board, we already had uh, people signed up to go to the Hibbing facility. So um, I kept on with that. Okay, because if you look at the date, it says April 9th, 2019 to April 27th, 2019. So that-, that Yeah, we've got, we've got a class starting in October. Okay. And then we started, uh, had a class in February. Okay. And then we had a class uh, beginning in April. Okay. And then one in April 30th started over at Bemidji. Okay. So there's, and then beyond that was that, yeah, was a part of the deed. Money. Uh, we had like 12 students out of there. So there's like 40. Yep. Two participants right now. And uh, some of them are still going to school uh, and completing. So. Okay. Because, know. because of the procurement policy, Davis had to come back to the council to get approval for using the sole source. Yeah, I, I, initially I thought because of the first class that was already set up, I thought maybe that had been. That, and you, know, you were just starting a new, so. Yeah, but. <laughs> and I know this is really good programming because I know like they've even, Hibbing is 
offered to come up here to, to give um, lessons to one of our people that works and can make it up to get to these things. Yes, which is which is a plus. Yeah. That's why I wanted yeah. to talk to Travis about yesterday was <coughs> um, giving uh, community college is uh, is uh, and, and MnDOT also leaves it's from MnDOT. I uh, think it's a good idea maybe to bring the instructors right to the facility here yep. and um, and maybe even rent uh, vehicles so that their driving instructors can do on road here. Yeah, that sounds and, like and a good expedite idea. And expedite the process and, yep. and, and get more people into the program mm -hmm. because it costs a lot of money to get people 14 trips over to him yep. and feed them and gas mileage. Uh, so we could probably do get more people involved in the program, even and housing at Fortune Bay, and, and, and also over at Vermilion, uh, instruction there, mm -hmm. and on road there. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think it's a great idea. I think it's a wonderful idea because back in the day, and I'm going to say this because I this is back in the day, back in the '80s. Um, the tribe had a uh, an agreement with Staples AVTI at the time. And they did on-reservation heavy equipment and on-reservation carpentry. Yeah. The instructors came here, because I remember Carl Long did the carpentry, and who, Travis was involved with that uh, years ago, I think, too. With, no, you went off the reservation for your training, right? Yeah, I, I actually went to school yeah. over there. But I know that um, a lot of people did the carpentry and heavy equipment right on the reservation, because transportation was a huge issue. And it yeah, yeah. enabled the people to get those skills right here and work on projects here. So I think that's an excellent idea. It just saves on costs and people can get there more close. You know, so if it's closer, they can get there. So good idea. Well, and it's good to build these relationships and collaborations with area <coughs> colleges or area, um, uh, even like the unions or the, or the um, 49ers or the um, MnDOT or whoever because they're looking for people, and they're willing to do just about anything to get people on their jobs because there's such a shortage. So, True. good job. Any other questions for Dave regarding the sole source request for commercial driver's license training in the amount of $43,750 for Hibbing Community College, MnDOT, agreement? If not, I'll call for a motion to approve. Move. Moved by Travis. Is there a second? Second. Second by Shane. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Silent. Motion carried. Good job, Dave. Thank you. Miigwech, Dave. Miigwech. Next is Leanne Hoffman. Uh, first item is sole source request for Anton Troyer to conduct Ojibwe language classes and teachings at the Boys Fort Summer Immersion Camp. June, at the end of June. I think that's a typo. Um, and another contract, Scott Hill for mural painting in the Language Resource Center. Good morning. Well, I'd just like to point out uh, the fact that she's handing out the ones that have been uh, reviewed by the, uh, the attorney. Both have been reviewed by the attorney. So um, Mark one. has um, and, been, and one, I don't know how to say that, Ben Chaputo, Benjamin. Oh, Ben Pacino? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. He reviewed them and forwarded them to Mark, and Mark also reviewed them and approved them yesterday. Okay, so we'll use these ones. Yeah. Okay. Was there any um, there major changes between the two, the one? Because we have the one in the booklet, and you just handed us one that's been reviewed by the attorney. Is there any big changes between the two? Um, not so much Anton's, no. No? Okay. That was one. Just Scott. So the first is uh, Anton Truer. We want to have a two-day summer immersion camp. We had left over MIAC funding after we oh. c completed our objectives. Mm -hmm. um, we're in the process of the finishing up the language culture center, but we still had leftover funding. So we want to bring him up for two days to do intense language. And this has to be spent by June 30, correct? Yes. Yeah. Leanne, I think um, the Anton's contract, Mark did 
add. They did add to it. Um, they added two items onto it, and it was regarding copywriting because KBFT wants to broadcast some of the content. Which number is that? In addition, um, What, oh. what did you hand? Did you hand them, Anton's? The, yeah, the, the contract, the new contract. For both of them. For both. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. sorry. So it was that like was my mistake. Yeah. Yeah, it's number eleven. Yeah, that was my. I was looking at the agenda packet, contract. That was my my mistake. But that's what he added. Number ten and eleven were in addition to what's in the packet. And that amount is eight thousand dollars for this for two days. For yeah. two days. For two days. I guess for any doesn't know. I'm not sure he's um, one of the most pro prolific scholars of Ojibwe, and he's an instructor at BSU. So he's he's at the forefront of the language revitalization. Sorry, Amanda. <laughs> um, on the back page. Yep. Just a typo error, I think. Oh, is that the one without Scott Hill? Yeah. That's, that's, that's the first one, yeah. The next one. That would be the, this one here. Oh, okay. Any questions on the agreement for um, the Anton Drewer Torrent to do the language? Did their language classes and teachings? Um, Move. Moved by Shane. Is there a second? Second. Second by Chief. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Silent. Motion carried. That was me. <laughs> 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 so the next contract I have is uh, for Scott Hill, and we would like him to paint a mural in the language and culture uh, center. That's, that's the old education office area. So um, just to make the room have a more culture feel. So um, the mural, it'll have a story within itself. So yeah. just by his art. Was someone doing that prior to him painting it? Like having input on the story or how that came about? Um, I'm not sure. I think he's just painting it. He might send like um, screenshots and such mm -hmm. to Chaz. And interact with him. Oh, okay. So he's but, with yeah, okay. yeah. Is it being painted on one, just one wall, or all of? All it's going to be on a small wall. And actually, what he's going to do is paint it on canvas, mm -hmm. and then glue it to the wall. So, um, in in years, we can eventually oh, okay. take it down. So if say we move, or yeah. Well, kind of wonder if you want to put it like in a glass, in like a glass backing where you have the, the actual case to it. Oh, right. Put it on there, then a glass covering over so when you want to move it, you can just take the whole thing down. That's, yeah, that's kind of similar to the ones up here, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that that's something that we can incorporate. So this here is also funding that we have left over from our MIAC grant okay. after we've completed all of our objectives. Okay. And how much? June 30th, yes. And yes. How, much, how much is that? $5,036. Move. Aye. Aye. Big witch. Leanne, um, can you just add that the immersion camp is going to be coinciding with the last week that the Birch Park yeah. canoe making? Yeah. Oh, so, so. So we'll, we'll be able to transport people or they can walk up to the school to be involved with that as well. Can you just maybe for the audience's sake that don't know anything about the canoe building? Oh, project? okay, so, yeah, KBFT has um, Wayne Valeri. Yes. He's up here, he's coming up, he'll be up Thursday and Friday, and then the rest of the weekend, they're building a birch bark canoe out of resources from our our village and you know the woods and stuff so that he'll be up here then that full week um week after next hey yeah yeah during yeah. the vermilion pow yeah oh, okay. that's yeah. yeah and so anyone can come up and help and have their hand in building a yeah we've dug up spruce root for the lashings to, to you know put the birch bark together Unfortunately, around here, there's no birch bark big enough to, to use on the canoe, so he's gathering it down there. He's making the gun rails, forming them down there, and then he's going to bring it up here, and we'll start construction of the canoe pretty soon. And that's going to be located at the school? At the school, yep. We built a big table, a work table there, so that it'll stay there until it's done. And then we got to figure out somewhere to put it. Um, Malita is actually uh, working with, KBFT and I don't know with her funding, and she's having uh, Mrs. Reed, well Lynn Reed, oh, she used to be the teacher in art, teacher, yes. the art teacher, and she's going to be doing um, clay, um, pit fire pottery this week. Oh, Thursday nice. we're going to go dig up clay, and then um, with the immersion camp too on Friday they're going to be doing a, a pit fire. So I think they're going to be looking for a lot of people. She'd like to get sixty pieces and do a huge, like you know. Traditional mm -hmm. pit fire, so that'll be going on too. Tons of stuff. Billy, is there a way we can get that information out on the website, maybe for just uh, those that maybe are looking for something to do or checking the website that uh, with the clay fire and the clay pit? Yeah, I can like yeah. consolidate everything and yep. have like a little schedule. Yep, of cultural that'd be great. Things. Yep. So, okay. That would be good. Thank you, Miigwech. Miigwech. Thank you. Sweet. Okay, next is um, <coughs> me, Billy Esham, <laughs> with a um, sole source request for registration fees to the National Indian Head Start Directors Association for registration fees for Christine Lundemo, Laura Furwalt, Heather Nelson, Mark Samala, and Amber Wilkie. Um, the total is $3,500. And this is already budgeted in your Head Start? Correct. What, what are they uh, looking at going? I'm sorry? What are they looking at going? Uh, I believe it's next, next, next week. Next week. Next week? Mm hmm So that's the week of the 17th through the 21st, somewhere there? I don't have it in front of me. Actually, it's the week of the 24th. Or the week after. Right. A couple weeks. Oh, okay, the last week, okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to that, Jay. I know they asked me, but I didn't, I didn't really plan on it. Oh, okay. Okay. 
If I did go, I'd probably start walking now, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we have a motion to approve the sole source request for registration fees for the National Indian Hel Head Start uh, Conference for Head Start staff? Move. Moved by Shane, sir, second. <laughs> second. Second by Chief. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We, silent. Motion carried. We could put him on a greyhound. <laughs> Do we have a motion to adjourn? Move. Moved by Travis. Sir, second. Second. <laughs> second by Chief. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Silent. Motion carried. I'll donate two bucks for his.